Okay, I thought I would make a little video here to um, show you how you can go about installing servos without using an extension. What I've got is this wing over here, and I need to put the servo in that location and run wire out so I can plug it into the receiver. There are a couple options is you can use an extension or you can do like I did to this one and install a new wire in order to reach the destination that you need to get to. So <clears throat> what I did is already pre-cut some wire. Uh, you can find this on Hobby King's website for a very inexpensive price and then you can pick up a pack of servo connectors. Those are also very expensive. About the only thing that's going to add any expense to this project would be uh, getting a pair of these these uh, pliers that you need in order to set the pins for the plug for the servo. So first step, of course, is we got to get into the servo and get this thing opened up. So there's the this is a just a inexpensive Futaba S3003 um, servo that's been used so it's past its warranty date for sure uh, this was used in an older plane that uh, crashed and bit the dust and uh, now we're installing these servos into a new plane I have previously checked the servo to make sure the servo is working before I start into this project here. So what I'm going to do is the first step is to uh, desolder the, uh, the servo. And let's get the, get the little servo horn off of here. Make, make life just a scat, scat easier. So that way that sits a little bit flatter. Um, <clears throat> if you haven't used this before, the soldering wick actually works pretty decent. Um, although this particular one doesn't have much flux to it, so it doesn't like to pick up the solder all that well. So I'm applying some uh, solder flux to help. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, they call it Dr. Marty's product. It's a uh, soldering flux. It's works excellent works very great i've been very happy with its results if you have no soldering skills this is not that hard of a project and something you can quickly learn how to do so typically what i do is just preheat this up a little bit and then stick the flux on top of the and it sucks up the solder and then you gotta cut it off and move to the next section to keep drawing the solder off so we can detach the wire. You can simply just detach the wire, but I'm going to pull the solder off so that I can uh, replace it with some uh, like solder from which I'm using in this project. Again, as you see, it sucked up some solder. Cut it off, get us a new section little more flux there is another brand of this uh, solder ribbon that you can find on the internet or on uh, even eBay I've seen it on eBay uh, this stuff I have not been that happy with there there is another brand that's definitely better uh, really draws up this the solder very well this one not so much uh, if I use some flux paste it works even better at drawing up the solder yeah watch the fingers because it does get a little bit toasty warm keep working and getting that solder wire off of there and it will just make life just a little bit easier to get some of this get some more of the solder off so apply a little more solder flux And see if we can't remove some more of this solder. Yeah, I think that got it. Yep, that got it. <clears throat> so I'll add a little more flux, and then we'll move on to the next wire. Yep, 
I think what I'll do is get the wire off first and then come back for the solder. Make sure you know the the color of your your wire order. So when you go to put it back on, otherwise you can reverse your servo. Which this is also another way, instead of buying a servo reverser, of reversing a servo. Although you may not want to do it again if your uh, servo is new. Because uh, that, that, this would definitely void your warranty on this, doing this. This is basically one of the longest processes in this whole project is getting the solder off. And some people may or may not do this. I do it just to get the solder that I'm going to put on like with the solder that I'm going to put on the wires. You can also find that the other soldering ribbon and this Dr. Marty stuff from a source online called um, Radical RC. Uh, I've bought some stuff from them. They're also a good source for if you want to build your own A123 batteries. Uh, they got all the stuff needed. Or you can have them build it for you. But it's definitely cheaper to do it yourself. And the soldering is really not that difficult. And there's also plenty of sources on the internet to uh, get uh, information on how to solder the batteries together. I made a video but have never posted it because the video didn't come out like I wanted it to. And just didn't look all that great. So I never posted it when I built some A123s for a friend of mine. And uh, I haven't been soldering for... Too many years, but it's not that hard. Of course, my dad did a ton of soldering, so I did watch him a lot when I was a kid. And that helped. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend this back with some solder that uh, I'm going to use on the wires themselves. Yeah, put a little spot of wire on there. Now our next step is to get some wire exposed. So, because the wire is too small for the hole, here's another way of stripping the wire if you don't have a decent set of wire strippers. That would do for these small servo wires. Just make a little score mark. Reach in, grab it with your fingernail, pull it off. Seems to do the trick quite well. Yeah, let's get a little bit more off on that one. There we go. Yeah, get the next wire. I basically score it down till I feel the wire on the exacto knife. And there we go for that one. So now what we'll do, let's get these attached to the new servo connector. And so what I like to do on these so the wire doesn't fall out all the way is I get them pre-started on their fold-in process. And that helps to hold them in place a little bit better. And I don't know if you can see it, but I slide the wire until it gets to the second connector here and I'm going to take just a skosh more off of this so that I got just enough wire showing for sure. Okay. 
All right, that should be good enough. Okay. Now, grab our tool and we'll crimp it. I like to do a light crimp under the the wire housing itself first and then come back to crimp the wire. And just give it a good squeeze and it should fold on up pretty decently and then I move it up a bit and do the wire section. Now the wires are all cinched and nice and tight and shouldn't come loose and then <clears throat> I do one more trick that's kind of a it's just a, a me thing that I do, and that's I'll dab a little bit of flux and some solder on that as well, and that will definitely secure the wire. But let's get these last two pre started. I think these pliers are like 20 bucks at the local hobby store. Uh, I don't know if Hobby King has them. The wire and the connectors I got for a very inexpensive price at Hobby King. I can't remember how much I paid, but I want to say the connectors were about a, a two bucks maybe. And the wire, uh, I think I got two two meters of wire for shoot. I think it was like sixty nine cents or something like that. It wasn't overly expensive at all. And definitely, if you have all this stuff to do this, it's actually cheaper than going to the local hobby store and buying yourself a set of extensions. And since I've been doing it this way, I make my own extensions for the project that I'm, I'm using. So I don't buy extensions any longer. There's no need. Not when you can take just a little bit of time and a little bit of, of money and you can build your own. Not that there's anything wrong with the, the store-bought ones. It's just a way to save some bucks that you can apply to the hobby elsewhere. And then before I get these all cinched up and put away, I'm going to open up this end and check the continuity. Just to make sure that we're got juice flowing through the wire before I go ahead and solder everything into place. So I'll get this one opened up. And I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin these to go into the, the servo itself. And if you are not overly familiar with soldering, there is a, a good site called RC Model Reviews. He does an excellent job of explaining how to pre-tin, how to solder. Uh, he's got multiple videos on it, so there's uh, no really need for me to get into that. Although you will see me go through the process here in just a minute as I finish getting this one trimmed up a little bit more. All right, since I don't have a third hand laying around, we use the handy dandy third hand tool. And then dab a little flux on here. This just helps speed up the process of getting the solder to flow into the wire. And works excellent. There we go, there's one. Two. And I am using the lead base 6040 solder, which is what I prefer. I've tried the lead free stuff and it just doesn't flow as well in my experience. So that's why I've gone to using the 6040. And shoot, my dad's in his 60s now and has been soldering nearly his entire life. and. So far, he's still as healthy as can be, so as long as you're not breathing in the 
the lead should be fine. Let's turn this on and now we'll check the wires. Let's do black first. We've got continuity. Red. Yeah, that was a bad solder job. Need to fix that. There you go. Let's see. The red one. Registering. Although my buzzer is not working very well, I think my batteries are about to die in my voltmeter. That one's working good. We'll recheck the black one. And we're good to go. So now we can move forward to attaching the wires into the uh, servo. And we'll go ahead and get these slid up in here. And uh, Since I already pre-did these, I know which direction these wires are going to face when they go in. And... Uh, this, these are a Futaba connector. Hobby King does have some without, so you don't have to buy the Futaba ones. But since I use Futaba, I usually get the Futaba connectors. And therefore, I know that blacks on the bottom are ground, power, and then signal. And it's the same way on this one. On the direction that I'm facing, the, the ground's going to be on the bottom. All right, that should be there. Now pull out our handy dandy servo checker and see if we're functioning properly. Power turned on. Looks like the servo's working. There we go. Working properly. And now I don't have to deal with putting on a servo extension to get it to fit the plane. So that's how you do it. Pretty simple. Last thing to do is button up the servo. So I hope you find this useful to you. And have a good one.